In this video, I will be explaining the hormonal regulation of the um, menstrual cycle. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to uh, talk about a typical 28-day cycle. Of course, it could vary in length um, from person to person, uh, but we will focus on this simplistic model. In a typical 28 days cycle, the first 12, uh, the first half of the cycle, the first 14 days, is what we call the follicular phase. And during this time, it is when the follicle uh, is going to grow and develop into a, a mature egg. Once the egg is uh, uh, formed, is going to be released into the fallopian tube, and that's when ovulation will occur around mid-cycle. And the second half of the cycle is what we call the luteal phase, uh, in which the body is uh, preparing for a potential uh, uh, fertilization uh, uh, and, and get ready for uh, for pregnancy. And, and so we are going to discuss um, the the changes in in various uh, hormones, uh, as well as their effects on the on the on the uh, ovaries and the. Uh, endometrium, which is the lining of the uterus. So at the beginning, uh, the beginning of the cycle is marked by the, the menses. Uh, that's when the menstrual flow is going to happen. Uh, at that point, um, the hypothalamus is going to release a hormone called GnRH, okay, growing endotropin releasing hormone. In general, a releasing hormone is a hormone uh, from the hypothalamus that is going to allow the anterior pituitary gland to release another hormone. In this case, in the presence of GnRH, the anterior pituitary gland is going to release two hormones, uh, FSH and LH. During the follicular phase of the um, cycle, uh, the FSH is going to play a more important role than, than LH. FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone, and as the name implies, it's going to uh, travel to the uh, through the bloodstream uh, to the ovary, and it's going to cause follicles to start to develop. At any given month, uh, several follicle is going to uh, develop. However, only one uh, of these follicles is going to actually become the the mature egg. So as the follicle grows for the first half of the cycle, it actually uh, will release the hormone estrogen. Okay. Before we continue in this diagram, let's take a look at the graphs. If you focus on here, uh, you can see at the beginning of the cycle, uh, there is a slight increase in the LH and the FSH, certainly much more so uh, compared to the end of the previous cycle. And uh, again, at this point, at the follicular phase of the cycle, FSH is going to be uh, the more important hormone because it will cause the follicle in the ovary to grow into a mature egg. As the follicle develops, you can see that the level of estrogen is going to, to rise. And, and the level of estrogen is actually going to peak uh, when the egg is uh, uh, fully mature and is ready to be released into the fallopian tube. So the estrogen is actually going to do two things uh, to the body. The first thing is it's going to travel to the endometrium and it will uh, cause the lining of the uterus, the endometrium, to uh, uh, thicken, and 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 it will uh, cause uh, new blood vessels to form. So all these is in preparation for the potential uh, pregnancy that might occur uh, towards the end of this particular uh, cycle, and and so it's getting thicker and thicker and thicker. The second thing estrogen will do is it's actually going to travel back to the hypothalamus and it will trigger the hypothalamus to release more GnRH, which would in turn cause the anterior pituitary gland to release more FSH and more LH. Okay, So this is an example of positive feedback because rather than shutting down its own production, it's actually going to travel back to the, to the brain and exaggerate the initial uh, uh, effect. So the second time around, when you have more GnRH, um, 
and, and causing more FSH than LH to be formed. In, in, in this particular instance, the LH is going to be the more important hormone. LH stands for luteinizing hormone, which marks the beginning of the lutein phase. In fact, following a sudden increase in FSH and LH, particularly LH, it is going to trigger ovulation. It is going to cause the mature egg to be released from the ovary, and then it's going to go into the fallopian tube. So this, this thing right here, this little circle, is your mature mature egg, okay? And it's gonna go into the uh, Philippian tube. And coming back to the graph here, you can see when the level of estrogen peaks, it's actually going to be followed by a sudden uh, increase in LH and FSH, okay? And the increase in LH is so much more drastic compared to that of FSH. So this, this little peak here is actually called an LH search all right uh, if someone wants to buy an ovulation kit uh, from a drugstore uh, basically is is uh, is going to test for the levels of LH in the urine uh, and and when there is a sudden increase in the LH um, the antibodies in the in the detection kit is going to um, uh, 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 you know, change color, for example, and, and the person will know when uh, ovulation is happening, and, and that would be uh, the, the time uh, to conceive if that's what the person wants. So after LH, you can see that ovulation is happening right after, okay? You can see the egg is now released from the follicle. So because the follicle is no longer there, it finished develop, uh, finished developing in the first half of the cycle. Um, that's why the level of estrogen is now going to be to be declining uh, a little bit. All right. The remaining material that you have uh, after ovulation is actually going to change into uh, a transient structure. This structure is called the corpus luteum. So back to our diagram here. Uh, this was ovulation, and the leftover material from the uh, follicle is going to become this structure called corpus luteum. Okay, the corpus luteum is not going to stay there forever. Uh, it's just going to be there for the next uh, uh, 14 days or so. Uh, when the corpus luteum is present, its function is to produce uh, another hormone progesterone progesterone will do two things progesterone is going to travel to the endometrium and continue to thicken the endometrium and you can see here um, this is pretty much where the estrogen has left off and and following a little decline on the estrogen uh, now that the corpus luteum is there uh, you will have a rise in progesterone causing your uh, endometrium to continue to thicken. And, and you can see when the level of estrogen peaks, that's when the endometrium is going to be thickest. Remember, when the corpus luteum is formed, at this time, the egg is already in the Philippian tube. And that is the location where fertilization is usually going to take place. And so your body is getting ready for a potential pregnancy, for, for implantation. You need to have all these blood vessels ready to support the implanting uh, 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 um, a zygote. Uh, and so um, the endometrium will be good, the thickest when the level of progesterone is the highest. Progesterone will also do a second thing. It's going to go back to the hypothalamus, and this time what it will do is it will actually block the release of, of, of GnRH, okay? And, and, and because you have no GnRH, then LH and FSH is also going to be, to be blocked. Now that's a good thing, that's a good thing. Um, because you already have an egg in the uh, fallopian tube, so there is, it doesn't make sense to, to cause another follicle to start to develop, and, and certainly uh, you do not need another ovulation at this point. So it makes sense for progesterone to go and inhibit the secretion of GnRH, which in turn would cause uh, uh, FSH and LH to decline. And that's what the graph shows. After the progesterone peaks, you can see the LH and the FSH is going to be suppressed. Uh, for quite some time. 
But remember, uh, the corpus luteum is not going to last forever. If there is no pregnancy, if there is no fertilization of the egg, the corpus luteum is going to break down. And as the corpus luteum breaks down, you can see the level of progesterone is going to come down. When the progesterone level drops to almost uh, back to baseline, what happens is there is no more hormone that will support the uh, endometrium lining and all the new blood vessels that was formed in the previous cycle will now shed and, and then the menstrual flow will begin. With a decrease in progesterone, these inhibition, these negative feedback inhibition will no longer be there and so the level of GnRH will rise once again, causing the LH and the FSH to be released from the anterior pituitary gland. And now the FSH will cause another uh, uh, follicle to develop for the next uh, cycle. And so the cycle will repeat itself. So what happens if someone actually does get pregnant? When someone gets pregnant, what will happen is um, the placenta is going to start to form. As the placenta is developing, is going to form a hormone uh, called HCG, and and what HCG does is HCG is going to help maintain the corpus luteum for a little longer until the placenta is fully formed. When the placenta is fully formed. Uh, it will take over in the production of estrogen and progesterone. Because remember, you have to maintain the thickness of the endometrium throughout the entire pregnancy. Uh, you know, you, can, you cannot lose the blood vessel that supports the growing baby. And so you need something to uh, keep on making the progesterone and estrogen. And that is the function of the, of the placenta. So two extra things. Uh, progesterone um, can actually be used as a, as a contraceptive. If someone does not want to have baby, they could take uh, uh, birth control pills, uh, and some of these things are going to have progesterone in it. And, and you can understand why, because by having a sustained level of progesterone, you will not be uh, releasing FSH and LH. No FSH, no follicle will develop. No, no follicle developing means no eggs, and, and, and therefore no, no pregnancy, right? Um, and, and, and the other thing is HCG is the hormone uh, that is being tested in, in pregnancy tests, right? Uh, if someone wants to find out they're pregnant or not because they have a lay period, for example, uh, the, the, the urine test uh, is going to be detecting the level HCG. Uh, in fact, HCG is going to continue to rise um, uh, for the first uh, several weeks of the pregnancy uh, until it peaks. Uh, to a certain level. And so that's the uh, hormonal regulation of the menstrual cycle. I will type out the um, full name of uh, all these hormones in the uh, video description uh, below. Uh, thanks for watching.